more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. I top billing. Your boy is back talking a little college football. I miss talking college football, at least from a college football perspective and not a draft perspective. So I thought I'd jump back into the fray a little bit here. Kind of kind of meshing a couple of topics there. So we've seen the comments by Nick Saban going absolutely nuclear on people, even nuclear on himself. If you're privy to some of the things that I'm privy to in the business, you would know that Nick Saban in that Alabama program should not be exposing the skeletons in the closet out of all the teams, right? There's a whole bunch of teams that probably could talk. That's not one of them, right? Georgia, Alabama, all these high-level teams like that should not be exposing any type of skeletons. To me, it's reckless, absolutely reckless, right? We know Alabama's going to be hell on wheels next year. Georgia is going to be hell on wheels next year. My man Jimbo Fisher out there with Texas A&M, building, building himself a monster as well, inserting himself into the fray, definitely caught the attention of Nick Saban having the highest rated class of all time. But to me, this stems really from Coach Kirby Smart. Now keep in mind, as great as Alabama is, that man had never lost to an assistant coach before. He loses to two in one season. First, Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M got in that ass, pause. And then, of course, the Georgia Bulldogs in the rematch in the national ch- title game, they ended up pulling that bad boy out in a really, I really love that game right there, man. I've watched it several times. There's a very, very high-level chess match game. And you have to give credit to Coach Smart and those guys for their coaching adjustments and that's something that's really, to me, lost when you talk about the Georgia program and Coach Smart in general. Now, listen, I'll give credit where credit is due. I'm not one of these people that'll hold on to something. There was that one particular point in time where I was like, I don't know if Coach Smart is a super premium elite level coach as far as the X's and O's goes, or not even X's and O's. We know his defensive prowess is beyond beyond measure. But having the, a complete team – as far as being able to coach out there on the, on that field in in-game situations, I thought he left a lot to be desired. That's no longer the case, at least for that particular season there. But if you go back one season, which is what I want to talk about right here, Georgia had a way more talented team than it did when it won the national championship. How can that be? I want you in the comment section to tell me, how did Georgia win a national championship with a lesser talented team? Now, keep it in, keep it in context. The team was absolutely loaded, just like this team now. That's why I always get on these fans when they're talking about, oh, they lost this, that, and the third. What are they bringing back, though? They did the same shit from the 2020 season and headed into 2021. And if you look at it right here, this is 2020. Look at this picture right here um, in the Auburn game. Same quarterback, Stetson Bennett right here. Same tight end, Darnell Washington. You had Justin Schaefer at a left guard here. You had your left tackle there in Jamari Sawyer. You had Ben Cleveland, who saw time as a rookie with my Baltimore Ravens playing. Uh, Fitzpatrick was already on the team. Warren McClendon, the right tackle. Same George Pickens at wide receiver. You had Trey Hill at center, who I don't think, let me see, maybe six in one hand, half a dozen on the other when you talk about him versus Cedric Van Pran. I don't think you lost anything at the position. Maybe you gained a little bit more in Cedric Van Pran. Uh, That's up to you to decide there. But, of course, going on beyond those guys in the running back position, you had the same running backs. There was nobody new in the backfield from 2020 to 2021. Still had Jameer White, James Cook, uh, Kendall Milton, my boy Kenny McIntosh, the same exact guys there when you won the national championship. So there was no upgrade in that position. Maybe you could say, obviously, the upgrade would be an experience with those guys playing another season. Beyond George Pickens, who was it at the wide receiver position? Right, the same cast. Lab McConkey out there. You had uh, Jermaine Burton. So none of those guys were were freshmen or were people that came out of the blue. We already knew about Lab McConkey, and we already knew about a Jermaine Burton and guys like that. Now, Brock Bowers at the tight end position, that's your upgrade. No doubt about it. Now, listen, on the defensive side of the ball, 
that shit is nuts. Absolutely nuts. Now, some people are saying the greatest defense of all time. Definitely one of the greatest defenses of all time. You have to give it credit for that. No doubt about that. But the previous year, think about this. All those guys drafted off a of defense were all there. Except Darian Kendrick, the worst player on the defense, in my opinion. That was a downgrade. They won it with a downgrade in certain positions, in my opinion, or at least with less depth. Think about this. Let's just go through some of these guys right here. Adam Anderson. We know his situation, unable to play. He did contribute to a lot of wins, though. One of the best edge talents that they have. I wholeheartedly believe that. Aziz Ojolari. There was nobody on the team last year better at rushing the passer than Aziz Ojolari. Had he been on this particular team, or it doesn't matter. He was on the previous team. That lets you know how football is. That's what I'm getting to. Trayvon Walker, the number one overall pick. Well, nothing, nothing else we need to even say about that, right? Jalen Carter. I can make an argument. I want to. I'm going to do. I've already said it, right? I think Jalen Carter may be better than Trayvon Walker. May not be as athletic, but as a pure football player, Jalen Carter may be better than Trayvon Walker. We'll see what Trayvon Walker to me is in a better defense that suits his skill set. But Jalen Walker, Jalen Carter, I'm sorry, Jalen Carter's skill set fits this defense and just about any other defense as well. That mama jumma right there is about to show y'all what's cracking this year. Tyreek Stevenson right here at a nickel spot. I don't think they had a nickel as good as Tyreek Stevenson, although I don't not sure he lived up to his potential um, at that spot. But I thought he was pretty good and better than what they had in 2021, which would be uh, a combination of William Poole and Latavius Brini. So get that. They also had, of course, N'Kobe Dean, to me, the best linebacker in the country. But that year, they had Monty Rice, who to me was the captain of the defense. And N'Kobe Dean steps in as the captain of the defense. But you had two captains of the defenses along with still having Quay Walker, who is let's he's a better athlete than N'Kobe Dean. He put it all together mentally and all that. He can be better than N'Kobe Dean. And I said N'Kobe Dean's the best in the country. Think about that. And along with a lot of those other reserve linebackers that they had there, but just those two and with the Zizo Jalari and still having Nolan Smith on the other side, Robert Bill still there, <laughs> right? And they had Jermaine Johnson, another first round draft pick. <laughs> they were all on the same team and didn't win the national championship. They had the rubber band man, Richard LeCount. <laughs> I actually thought Chris Smith was an upgrade over Richard LeCount. So I'll say that too. But a lot of people aren't going to agree with that. I thought Chris Smith just a better player than Richard LeCount. Richard LeCount, a flashier player. He has some flashy plays, but a lot of just the core plays, that man would be bouncing off of tackles and shit like that, right? He'd be tackling all up high, getting slung off, all kind of stuff like that. Chris Smith just very solid and very rangy. And, of course, Lewis Singh, we saw – I believe he was the first, he was the second safety drafted. Think about that. The second safety drafted was already on that team as well, as long as with another draft pick and Richard LeCount, and Chris Smith was on that team as well. And at the corner spots, think about this. Keely Ringo, the starter, the guy with the pick six, he was already on the team. Darren Kendrick, like I said before, he came over from Clemson. He was a downgrade because the guys that were there before him were first round pick Eric Stokes and then second round pick Tyson Campbell. What? Now I expect Keely Ringo to have a good year and to be a first round draft pick, but the totality of it states that he was on the same team as Eric Stokes and Tyson Campbell in 2020. And once again, Georgia did not win the national championship with those three players at its disposal. Now, I forgot about a couple of people in the trenches, and this will tie in or dovetail into my next point. But check this out. Devontae Wyatt, first-round pick of the Green Bay Packers, was on that 2020 team. Malik Herrick. Now, maybe we'll go through the next however many years, and, and we won't remember Malik. But as far as a college football player goes, this dude was very solid. Very solid. And how could I have glossed over 
the number what 13 pick in the draft, Jordan Davis, right here at a shade. <laughs> I don't think you got. It. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm tripping because I'm out here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Maybe stuff is just weird for me. I'm out here all way out here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania for a little bit. And um, I just find this just amazing to me to be thinking about this. And these guys did not win the national championship with all these players on their team. All right. So let's fast forward this. 2022. This coming season right here. Look at some of these guys who were on the team in 2021 and 2020. So what I'm saying is these guys have a ton of guys who are highly experienced that just was waiting their turn. Guys like Tramel Walltower right here. You can't see this, but this is Zion Logue. Those two guys together in a front, I'm telling you, they're going to cause havoc. Be solid against the run. Hold up so the guys on the edge can really get to it. Keep guys clean that are in the second level. Guys like this, uh, Jamon Dumas Johnson right here. Right. Very athletic kid right here. I believe. Look right here. Another athlete in the back. Smile Munden Jr. <laughs> right. That's they got guys just on deck. Guys just on deck. I really like this kid right here. Nazir Stackhouse. Now nah, Stackhouse going to be doing this thing along with a guy like Warren Brinson. I'm just naming guys that you might not know off the radar. And they got to include, of course, Jalen Carter there, perhaps the best player. Uh, well, the best player on the defense and the guys that I named before who will be returning that were on both of those teams, like Robert Bill and Nolan Smith and Chris Smith <laughs> and Keely Ringo. Keely Ringo entering his third year. So he was on those teams as well. All right, but look, I couldn't find – uh a video frame to get everybody in that I wanted to, but I want you guys to think about guys like that. I miss like a Tyrion Ingram Dawkins here. That boy is going to be cold. Tiny time in Mitchell. We're going to be saying his name a lot out of Tennessee here. I can just scroll. There's your boy, Jalen Carter, man. I totally forgot about Marcus Roseme. This kid could have a big year next year. Definitely will have the opportunity to do so. We got, oh, man, think about this as well. Brad Jones. Brad Jones, I think, is a franchise tackle, right? He could possibly move, kick to the inside in the NFL. He would have that versatility. But I think of him as a franchise-type tackle. He could be a first-round draft pick in his own right, his third season on campus. And Amarius Mims, a guy they got to see them get in, right? It's just that he's in a holdup because you got Warren McClendon here, still here. It seems like he's been there for about seven years. I call him Steady Eddie. He's just one of those dudes, man. You can't say anything like his superlatives is just not like outstanding, but he's just very solid across the board in his skill set. I even like the Xavier Trust kid. He's earned my respect. Hopefully he's earned the respect of everybody in that group chat. <laughs> but as you can see here, man, they got guys in the trenches, people just trenches waiting to just come up. Marlon Dean. Who else? Who else? Who else? Bill Norton. Bill Norton's third season on campus. He's going to do his thing there. A lot of uh, newcomers that you could talk about as well. I will let them do their thing. William Poole. This is his fifth year on the team and he should be playing a major contributing role as he did last year. And you have, uh, Jalen Kennedy. He could be playing a role. Javon Bullard. I like a lot as a defensive back. <laughs> this is amazing. Here's your boy, Brock Bowers, Xavier sorry. I like who else is in here. We're not going to talk about the quarterback position of the same guy, but look at the guys behind him with a Carson Beck and a Gunner Stockton uh, coming there and a Brock Vandegrift. David Daniel as a defensive back. You possibly see him as a starter. Very talented player there. Who else we got, man? This guy right here, man. I'm sorry, man. You got to come. You got to come here to back here to Baltimore, baby. Come back here to Baltimore and, and transfer to the University of Maryland. 
come on, MJ Sherman. But hey, if not, you got a guy like MJ Sherman there, right? Look at that. Two two Maryland cats here. Come on, man. Come back here to Maryland and uh yeah. Not Dumas Johnson. MJ Sherman, though. I'm not, I'm not seeing a path for him. Not a clear path, but we shall see. Same thing with Jalen Everett there. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop coming to the DMV taking these kids. Georgia is a monster. I like what I saw from the Oscar Delp kid in the spring game. Uh, Lassiter here. Uh, he got some play last year. Of course, granddaddy himself, Darnell Washington. Eric Gilbert. Did I miss Eric Gilbert? I think I did. Eric Gilbert somewhere around here. Here we go. And Arian Smith. Arian Smith going to be back, right? If he can stay healthy, probably the best deep threat. And just think of a Deshaun Jackson type, just nine route you to death, right? Skinny, bang, eight you, and nine route you to death. Pause. That would be hard, absolutely hard. So let me know what you think about that. Isn't that crazy that Georgia had that much talent two years ago and didn't win the national championship? And what do you see from this Team coming up here, Kyrus Jackson, I totally forgot about. How long has he been on the roster? Do not sleep on Georgia. You would be crazy to automatically think because they lost all them guys that they don't have guys. They are loaded still. Coach Smart doing a damn thing, making Nick Saban over there go crazy. But, hey, waking up a sleeping giant maybe. I don't know. Eventually things, all things must fall down. I don't believe Alabama to be that, but you can definitely tell I believe that loss to Georgia rattled your man, Nick Saban. Let me know what you think, though. I right, stop billing. I appreciate you guys, as always. Consider hitting that thanks button. That's right there. Uh, you can tip your way to here because, you know, I'm serving that great content, that quality content, and uh, we keep it up like that. With that being said, peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.